Okay, hello everyone. So our topic now is about heating of the earth. And we are going to consider the different factors that affect uh, the heating of the earth. Heating of the earth on its axis that produces the daily cycle of day and night. And then we also have... Okay, now let us describe earth's motions. We have its rotation and revolution. When we say rotation, it's the spinning of the earth on its axis that produces the daily cycle of day and night. That is actually uh, the 24 hours that we have, yun yung kanya, rotation on its axis. And then we also have this revolution, wherein this one is defined as Earth's movement in a slightly elliptical orbit around the sun. So it will revolve for one year. Take note also that Earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees. So that is actually affecting the heating of the Earth's surface. You know that Earth orbits the Sun, right? And that it takes a full year for our planet to complete its orbit? Earth also rotates like a slightly tilted spinning top Earth remains tilted in the same direction all year round as we orbit the Sun. But that means the Sun's light shines differently on Earth at different times of the year. Let's look at Earth when it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Observe how the North Pole tips away from the Sun. This means that sunlight strikes the Northern Hemisphere at a shallow angle for a short period of time. This is why winter weather is generally cool with short days and long nights. As Earth orbits the Sun, we move towards spring in the Northern Hemisphere. Now Earth is tilted neither toward nor away from the Sun, as day and night are about equal in length. As we make our way to the summer months, notice that Earth is still tilted in the same direction only now on the other side of our orbit. The North Pole is tipping toward the Sun. Sunlight strikes the Northern Hemisphere more directly, and the Sun stays in the sky for a longer time. Compared to winter, summer days are warmer, and the Sun stays in the sky much longer. Notice, too, that while it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere, it's winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Because of Earth's tilt, the seasons are reversed. We observed how Earth's tilt creates the different seasons throughout the year. The axis of the Earth is an imaginary line on which the Earth rotates. It links up the two poles. Both the axis and the Earth are tilted at an angle of 23.5 degrees during a revolution. The tilting of the axis results in direct sunlight falling on different places during different seasons. This causes variations in the duration of days, nights and seasons. Relationship between the location of the overhead sun and the seasons. Similarly, the revolution of the earth and the tilting of the axis results in different angle of the sun during different periods. When the sun is directly overhead, we call this the overhead sun. At this time, the Earth's surface and the midday sun forms a 90 degree angle. Different locations of the overhead sun results in variations in the amount of solar radiation received in different areas and at different periods. Spring Equinox on the 21st or 22nd of March. The overhead sun is over the equator. The equator receives the largest amount of solar radiation. At this time, the northern hemisphere is in the spring equinox, while the southern hemisphere is in the autumn equinox. The angle of the sun 
decreases towards the poles. On this day, the two hemispheres receive a similar amount of solar radiation, and the length of day and night is the same at all places on the Earth. After this day, it is spring in the northern hemisphere, where the day is longer than the night. In the southern hemisphere, it becomes autumn, when the day is shorter than the night. Summer solstice. On the 21st or 22nd of June, the overhead sun is over the Tropic of Cancer. It receives the largest amount of solar radiation. At this time, the northern hemisphere is in the summer solstice, while the southern hemisphere is in the winter solstice. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the length of daytime of the northern hemisphere is the longest in the year, while that of the southern hemisphere is the shortest in the year. Besides, there are 24 hours of daylight at the Arctic Circle and 24 hours of darkness at the Antarctic Circle. Autumn Equinox On the 22nd or 23rd of September, the overhead sun is over the equator again. The equator receives the largest amount of solar radiation. On this day, the northern hemisphere is in the autumn equinox, while the southern hemisphere is in the spring equinox. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the two hemispheres receive a similar amount of solar radiation, and the length of day and night is the same at all places on the Earth. After this day, it is autumn in the northern hemisphere, where the day is shorter than the night. In the southern hemisphere, it becomes spring, when the day is longer than the night. Winter Solstice On the 21st and 22nd of December, the overhead sun is over the Tropic of Capricorn. It receives the largest amount of solar radiation. On this day, the northern hemisphere is in the winter solstice, while the southern hemisphere is in the summer solstice. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the length of daytime in the northern hemisphere is the shortest in the year, while that of the southern hemisphere is the longest in the year. There are 24 hours of darkness at the Arctic Circle and 24 hours of daylight at the Antarctic Circle. Okay, so let us review these terms. We have perihelion, when our planet is 147.3 million kilometers from the sun, so it is closer than at any other time. So this is a perihelion. And then we also have here the aphelion, when Earth is about 152.1 million kilometers from the sun, farther away at any other time. So as you all know, because... The, uh, we have here an elliptical orbit. We don't have a perfect circular orbit. Then the seasonal variation in the angle of the sun above the horizon affects the amount of energy received at Earth's surface. So as you can see here, for example, yung sun at this point, yung sa gitna, 90 degrees siya. So they are perpendicular here. Mas mataas yung concentration ng heat. Wherein, in sa taas, we have at 45 degrees, 
there will be less less intense heat so it will be colder and then here naman also acute and uh, at, at an acute angle 45 degrees it also has less intense heat which is also cooler so because we have a curved earth the sun's rays hit the earth at different angles Okay, pag sinabi natin 90 degree or directly overhead, this one is the equivalent number of atmospheres sunlight must pass. At 90 degree, it will travel this distance. So it is a shorter distance. And then, uh, let's say 10 degrees, it has to travel 5.70. Yan yung distance that the, rad the radiation must travel through the atmosphere. It has to travel longer distance. So it will be less intense. Kapag lower yung angle, there will be less intense because the radiation has to travel a farther distance. Okay, yan yung tinatawag nilang one unit kapag directly overhead. So, yan yung distance that it has to travel. Then it changes when the angle also changes. And also take note that the earth is tilted. So, this tilting of the earth also has an effect on the heating of the earths, on the heating of the different parts of the earth. A place is situated to the latitude receiving vertical rays of the sun, the higher will be its noon, and the more concentrated will be the radiation it receives. And also, earth's orientation to the sun continually changes. Earth's axis is not perpendicular to the plane of the ecliptic, but it's, but it's tilted at an angle of 23.5 degrees. Okay, let's review this one. As you have seen in the video, we have here um, solstice, equinoxes, and then another solstice. Let's take a look at this one, which is the North Pole, and then we have here the South Pole. This is summer solstice for the North Pole. For this part of the earth, it happens around June 21 to 22, where the sun vert is vertical at a latitude of 23 and one half degrees north. So it is located at the Tropic of Cancer. So, dyan yung 90 degree angle. So, dyan yung may pinaka intense ang heat of the sun. And also, if you are going to analyze it, as the earth rotates for 24 hours, at this position or this point, umaga lang siya for 24 hours. At the southern hemisphere naman or dito, okay, at the Antarctic Circle here, gabi naman siya for 24 hours during summer solstice sa North Pole. So, dito ay summer solstice sa North and then Winter solstice naman sa south. And then we have here, pag dito sila sa position na to, okay, the sun's heat is 90 degrees at the equator. So dito rin. At this position also, the sun's rays is 90 degrees at the equator. So this is equinoxes. Kasi equal naman siya. Yung face na to, equal yung sunlight it receives dun sa kabila ring face as this one rotates. Pag nandito naman siya sa position na to, if the earth is here, the north pole is pointing away from the sun since it's tilted by 23 and 1 half. Kung kanina, it's pointing towards the sun, kaya it's heated like this. At this position, it's pointing away from the sun. So we can now say that summer solstice at the south pole and then you have naman winter solstice at the north pole. So looking at this, as it rotates because uh, the earth's rotation, it will take 24 hours for a complete rotation to complete a day. So during um, winter solstice at the north pole, 24 hours naman gabi. And then dito naman, 24 hours na umaga. So the earth also receives the most intense 
uh, heat coming from the sun at 90 degrees dun sa latitude 23 and 1 half degrees at the South Pole, which is the Tropic of Capricorn. Let's recall this. Yan, Arctic Circle sa pinakataas. Tropic of Cancer, Equator, Tropic of Capricorn, and then Antarctic Circle. So that's why yung tilting ng Earth talaga ay may napakalaking e effect sa heating of the Earth or an equal heating of the Earth. We also have this, what we call, circle of illumination. As I have mentioned, dito sa my Arctic Circle, it's being illuminated for 24 hours during June solstice or summer solstice. Then dito, at this point, magiging na 15 hours, and then here, 13 and a, one half hours. Dito yung 90 degree angle, so it's 12 hours, half day, and then sa baba naman, 9 hours. If we are going to look at December, ito naman ang winter solstice sa northern hemisphere. We have here. Ayan. So, 9 hours dito. And then, whole day here, gabi. So, whole night. So, 24 hours dito, gabi. Sa Arctic Circle. And then here, the Antarctic at the south is 24 hours daylight naman. So this one happens also, the 90 degree angle is pointing to 23 and 1 half degrees at the south. The 90 degree angle nasa Tropic of Capricorn during the December winter solstice for the northern hemisphere. And the spring or fall equinox, equal lang sila yung heating ng, at, ng earth. There. So, 0 degree, that's where the equator is. Diyan naman yung 90 degree angle. That's why 24, or within 24 hours, we have 12 hours na umaga and then 12 hours na hapon. Okay, so they are equally heated. So, this is just a review of the latitudes. Kapag latitude, sinabi natin 30 degree latitude. Yan yun, 60 degree and then 90 degree. And pag sa baba naman, sa southern hemisphere, we have the negative 30 latitude, negative 60, and negative 90. Let's take a look at this. In this table, we have here the length of daylight. At 0 degrees, so that is found at the equator, during summer solstice, 12 hours yung daylight niya. So 12 hours umaga, or may daylight, then 12 hours madilim. At 10 degree latitude naman, 12 hours and 35 minutes yung kanyang daylight. At 90 degree, do sa north, summer solstice, ang length of daylight niya ay umaabot siya ng 6 months. At 80 degree, 4 months. 70 degree, 2 months. When we talk about winter solstice naman in the northern hemisphere, a 0 degree latitude, again, 12 hours. And then, at 10 degrees, we have 11 hours, 25 minutes na daylight. Pero during winter, let's say in the northern hemisphere, 0 naman siya sa 70 degrees, 80 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay, walang daylight. Okay? But if we have equinoxes from the term equinox equal, so we have 12 hours. Equal ang daylight at saka yung night time. Okay, now let's summarize. The characteristics of summer solstice for the northern hemisphere. First, kabaligtaran lang nun for the southern hemisphere. The date of occurrence for the northern hemisphere, summer solstice is June 21 or 22. The vertical rays of the sun are striking in the Tropic of Cancer or the positive 23.5 degrees. Locations in the northern hemisphere are experiencing longest length of daylight and highest sun angle. And then the farther north a location is from the equator, the longer the period of daylight. 
hanggang doon sa Arctic Circle when wherein we have mentioned that the length of daylight is actually 24 hours. The seasonal fluctuations in the amount of solar energy reaching various places on, on Earth's surface are caused by again the migrating vertical rays of the sun and the resulting variations of sun angle and length of daylight. And then the main reason behind this is the revolution of the Earth around the sun and that it is tilted. There's a point where it's tilting towards the sun. There's also a point where it's tilting away from the sun. Temperature plays a major role in meteorology. So let's also discuss temperature. Temperature is a quantity that tells how warm or how cold an object is. Of course, with respect to a standard, it is also related to the random motion of the molecules in a substance and it is proportional to the average kinetic energy of molecular translational motion. Okay, we have mentioned that temperature is related to the average translational kinetic energy of the molecules. Let's take a look at this animation. If we are going to apply heat here and then the temperature increases, you can see here 26 29 Kelvin, 30, 31, and so on. Look at the movement of the particles. Okay, as we increase the temperature, they are moving faster and faster. So that's what it means. That's the meaning of temperature. Okay, so now let's define heat. Okay, heat is the transfer of energy from a higher temperature object to a lower tem temperature object. Heat is considered as a transit energy. It is not something that is contained by an object, but it is something that is transferred between two objects of different temperatures. Para an siya, parang in mechanics, it's work done. Work done or work, it is not something that an object has. Pero it's a way para matransfer yung, let's say, potential energy to kinetic energy. Okay, you have to do work. So, ganun naman sa heat, it's a transit energy para matransfer mo from higher temperature to a lower temperature. So, internal energy is different from heat. When we say internal energy is the grand total of all energies, inside a substance. We also have two examples of heat or two categories of heat. We have sensible heat, heat we can feel and measure with a thermometer, and then we also have the latent heat, the energy involved when water changes from one state of matter to another. Okay, so now let's talk about the different mechanisms of heat transfer. We have conduction, convection, and radiation. And then let's relate, re relate this one on what happens in the atmosphere. Okay, when we say conduction, heat is transferred from hotter substance to colder substance upon contact with Heat conduction occurs by electron and molecular collisions. Metals are also considered to be good conductors of heat. As I have mentioned, there should be particle-to-particle -particle interaction so that conduction happens. Halimbawa, yung coffee, the hot coffee inside the mug, from the coffee inside to the mug, to the outer surrounding, mayroon ng transfer na energy from particles to particle. And coffee particles with a higher average kinetic energy collide with the container wall and transmit their energy into the surroundings. Ganun yung conduction. Paano ano yan? When you have a candle and then you touch the flame, that is a heat transfer through conduction. Take note also that liquids and gases are considered to be poor conductors and air is a very poor conductor of heat. 
Kaya, conduction, or that mechanism of heat transfer, hindi masyadong, na, may, may, wala siya masyadong major role sa transfer of heat in the atmosphere. Okay, now let's just have some trivia about conduction. Does it feel so cold inside an igloo or inside an ice hotel? Okay, we'll check. Okay, no, it's not because of the poor conductivity of ice. Whatever is the heat generated inside could not easily be transferred to the surroundings. So it could not easily escape an igloo or an ice hotel. Snow does not provide heat. It slows down the loss of heat they generate. And insulating materials delay the transfer of heat. And snow is considered, considered to be a poor conductor of heat. Okay, that's why some animals, they stay underneath snow. So that, kung sobrang lamig, the, warm gen the heat generated by their body could not easily escape. Because, yun nga, snow has a poor conductivity. How about convection? It's another mechanism of heat transfer. Liquids and gases transmit heat by convection. Heat, it is a heat transfer by actual motion of fluid or by currents. For example, boiling water. The heat is coming from the bottom. And then as we know, warm air rises or warm water rises and then cold water or, or cold air sinks. Okay, if we are going to take a look at the application of convection in the atmosphere, for example, here at the area wherein it's not vegetated, it has warmer air there. So that warm air will rise and we call that the rising thermal. And then when warm air rises and then cold air sinks, so that will produce convection. Okay, the rising thermal doesn't only carry air with it or warm air with it, but also water vapor. So it can result to formation of clouds. Kaya sometimes may mga area na may mga cloud formations and then may mga area na may ulan and then may mga area din na walang ulan. Okay, radiation is another mechanism of heat transfer. It is a heat transfer in an empty space. An energy radiated is called radiant energy. So the energy coming from the sun reaches the earth through radiation because there's a vacuum in between. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. What do we mean by this graph? This is the radiation intensity from the sun. So you can see ang pinakamataas na intensity is within the visible range. So nandiyan siya. Okay, it's actually uh, less than 4 micrometers. Yan. But energy coming from the sun is considered to be short wave. When we say shorter ang wavelength nila, that means it has higher frequency. That means it has higher energy. Earth also emits radiation. However, the radiation that the Earth is emitting is in the, uh, the long wave. Kapag longer ang wavelength, that means lesser ang frequency, so lesser ang energy. Let's take a look at the different laws of radiation. Number one, all objects continually emit radiant energy over a range of wavelengths. Katulad nung kanina, the sun radiates energy, ganun din ang Earth. Kaya lang, they have different wavelengths. Hotter objects radiate more total energy than cooler objects. And then hotter objects radiate more energy in short wavelength than do cooler objects. Kasi nga pag shorter ang wavelength, higher energy. Objects that are good absorbers of radiant energy are also good emitters of radiant energy. A perfect absorber... A perfect absorber reflects no radiant energy and appears and appears perfectly black. Good reflectors naman are also considered to be poor absorbers of radiant energy. Okay, discuss tayo ng ilang application. 
For example, mainit. Anong mas magandang suotin na damit? White or dark? Okay, the answer there is white. Because white is a good reflector of radiant energy. So, mara-reflect niya from the surroundings. It can reflect the radiant energy. It can just bounce back. It will not absorb by the shirt. Unlike if you are wearing black shirts. Pag malamig naman, ano mas komportable ka? You wear white shirt or black shirt? Okay, the answer is white shirt pa rin because good reflectors are poor emitters also. Good reflectors of radiant energy are poor absorbers, thus they are also poor emitters. So, pag malamig, the heat is coming from the body, mas malamig sa surroundings. So, since poor absorber siya, poor emitter din siya. So, mas ma-co-confine niya yung heat within the within your shirt. So, hindi ka malalamigin. Another application is this one. The skin pigmentation of chameleons allows it to modify its temperature. A chameleon will also make itself flat and dark so that it can absorb more heat kapag gusto niya mag-absorb ng mas mataas na heat. The chameleon can turn a lighter color in, attempt, in an attempt naman to cool down. Okay, I want you to think about this and apply what you have learned.